Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me and for the, the usual awesome organization of this event. So yeah, I, I just wanted to give an introduction to, to some of the concepts that will be, be covered by the other talks in this session. So the basic, the data model that we're all working with is this thing that you, you might call a genome graph or a, a, gen, a genome variation graph or just a variation graph. And the, the basic idea is that you have multiple sequences with differences between them and you'd like to describe their mutual alignment to each other. So in this particular model, the one that we, we've liked to work with, we attach labels to the nodes, which you can see here is these, these grayish boxes, semi-transparent grayish boxes. And those labels have sequences on them, DNA sequences. And as DNA sequences, they have a forward and reverse complement. But you know, as we typically do in bioinformatics, we just represent the forward and uh, the forward uh, complement, and, and excuse me, and, and don't describe the reverse complement. It's, it's implied. So what, what we want to relate in these are different genomic sequences and record those as walks through these sets of sequences, through this graph that's implied by these sequences. And you can see that here in this, this sequence tube map model as, as the colored bars that, that traverse different parts of the, the graph. And, and so, for example, there's a, a, a chunk in the middle that are all homologous to the entire section. There's a few on the top and bottom that have specific variants that, that differ them. And it's not just DNA sequences specifically that we put into this, but also annotations, for example, are, are walks through parts of the graph that would, would spell out particular sequences relative to some, to some sequence in there. So we can put bed files in, in this kind of context, and uh, we have a whole, a whole universe of tools built in the, the VG project, the Variation Graph project, that allow us to, to construct these from various data sources, be it a, a VCF file, a variance against a reference genome, multiple sequence alignment, or, or the output of an assembler. Uh, and then the line reads to that and work with the output in, in resequencing pipelines. So we can generalize the reference model we use to be something that has variation in it, so we don't have bias toward anything that we know about. But this also provides a kind of comparative genomic system, and I think that's going to become more important as we develop more whole genome assemblies. So just to describe a, some experiments I'm, I'm working on now and, and that relate to the, the trends in the fields of, field of genomics and bioinformatics, if you, if you have a lot of genomes and you want to build one of these graphs, you have to use a, a data model that describes a mutual alignment. And, and so we can take this, we make, use an aligner to, to say that bits of these genomes are, are the same. So over here on the, on the right, that's our, our uh, alignment graph. We have different uh, subsequences on the nodes and we're, we're asserting the aligner says these two bits are the same. So it says A and A are the same, B is the same, C is the same, D is the same. Uh, we can build a graph where the sequences are a certain kind of edge that, that connect successive bits of sequences we've seen. So you see the three colors here representing them. And these alignment edges are a gray edge, they're kind of special. We can collapse all the things connected by gray edges and, and we, we results in an induced variation graph. By implementing this carefully, we can scale it to work on, on the scale of large you carry out genomes and many of them, in fact. And so we can build these graphs out of potentially unlimited, kind of unbounded sets of genomes, depending on how we do the alignment. And so uh, the, the thing that matters now in construction of these graphs is, is what set of alignments do you use? And, and, and structuring that set of alignments that makes sense biologically is important. So if I take, I take some yeast genomes, I've got seven whole genome assemblies of yeast. I line them together with Minimap2 and do this, do this graph induction. I get this sort of hairball. So this is this bandage visualization system. The, the loops represent sequences. That collapsed bit in the middle is sort of, it's representing the transposing classes of these, these genomes all getting lumped up together. And so we can just remove short alignments. The graph becomes more unfolded and maybe a bit more bi biologically plausible, or at least interpretable from our perspective. And, uh, yeah, so this, this is pretty much the same data, but we've just prevented the collapse that's happening in the other one. But this, this is a very confusing object to work with and, or, and to visualize and think about. And so we can untangle it by, by uh, useful linearization of it and sort the graph. So if I sort that graph, I'll make position here on the x-axis. 
So every base in, in this graph is represented by some x-axis position. And the sequences I put in here are represented on my y-axis. So each one of these uh, sequences is colored by which chromosome it represents. So we have, we have the seven strains and each one of the chromosomes inside of them. And, and you can see that it's pretty much, um, oops, yeah, it's pretty much uh, as expected. So you, the chromosomes are homologous to each other. So this bit of this chromosome maps to this part of the variation graph. Right? And, and it's all pretty normal, except this one strain here has kind of a complex set of rearrangements in it. It's more diverged than the other ones. So we can look at this another way. We could compress it down so it's a little bit more dense. You can see that there's this, this chromosome that, and this sample on this chromosome here is sort of moved over and attached to another one. And uh, we, could, we could render other attributes of it, such as the, the relative orientation of the bits of the graph. You can see that some of these rearrangements are also inversions. Um, so they're, they're kind of running against the, the grain of the rest of the graph. And uh, it's a little hard to read, but you can see the relative position within the chromosome tells us that it's, it's bits and pieces of these chromosomes being combined together, not just the end of it. It's been stuck onto another one. Uh, and then finally, this sort of shows something that isn't that interesting, which is that there aren't large copy number variations in these genomes. Uh, the fact that it's blue means that everything is mostly copy number one relative to the space of the graph. Uh, and, and then, so we can do this for yeast, which is tiny. It takes a few minutes, so you can do it on your laptop. But you can also scale it to work on the scale of human genomes. And, and so here we've got this uh, 14 genome collection from the Washi St. Louis human genome improvement process. These are pack bio assemblies that have been made, and, and they've been scaffolded to some extent so that they kind of match up to each other in terms of the chromosomal structure. Um, and this, this also isn't that interesting at the scale. This is the same kind of coverage plot we had before. And, um, and so we can, we can zoom in on a bit of it. It's a sort of interesting spot and see that there's certain expansions or contractions in different genomes, the green being an expanded region. Um, and, and you can see that in the reference strains, uh, strains that reference uh, assemblies and not the other ones. And, and so, yeah, basically the retrospective is that we've made this system VG that lets us improve resequencing operations and organize your data better, build these from VCF files and so on. But that's limited because you can't represent every kind of variation that happens in real genomes. For full resolution, we have techniques that allow us to build, to build these from, from large genomes. And, and then by using linear, linearizations of these, so useful sorts of them, we can see into them and understand what's going on, understand how many genomes relate to each other in a very compact, compact space. Uh, but looking into the future, we're going to have more and more whole genome assemblies. These are going to become standard. There's the Vertebrate Genomes Project, which is aiming to assemble uh, many thousands of genomes. The Earth Biogenome Project, the same kind of thing. Genome 10K, you know, so again, the story is many thousands of genomes. Large genomes are going to be assembled, and they need to be related to each other. Uh, and this, this is then, actually, there's a Human Pangenome Project, where we're going to do 350 whole genome assemblies. Uh, we need to manage and understand these things. We need to look at the and understand the relationships. And, and this variation graph model provides a substrate, a reference system to describe the sequence variation. And we can link that into the huge library of, of ontological uh, and semantic information that we have available. And so that, that's why I like to, I'm happy to come here to the Biohackathon and, and what we'll be working on. So if you have, if you have things that relate to that, I'd be very happy to talk to you. And thanks for your time.